Welcome to the fifth Tokini Andy Kanji lesson. Today we're going to cover the meaning, building blocks, writing, historical evolution where applicable, and a story to memorize each of the following kanji. We'll also learn the parts and radicals needed for those kanji. Today, there are three new parts I'll teach, plus a fourth that I'll briefly cover during our second kanji. And stick around to the end of the lesson, where we'll be doing a quick quiz to help everything stick. So let's get into it. You'll see this simple looking kanji everywhere, because it means person. The official radical for person is person. Since it's also a radical, that means we'll be seeing it a lot in other kanji in the future. While you could think of this like a no leaning on a mirror so that we get two no's here, I suppose, we're going to leave this one as it is, making person person's only part. The kanji person has two strokes. As with almost all diagonal strokes, we start with the one that is drawn right to left. In this case, that means we draw the stroke on the left first. Interestingly, while many computer fonts make it look like both of the strokes in this kanji are of equal length and starting from the same point at the top, when you actually write it, the second stroke is drawn from just above the middle of the first stroke. This makes it look like a person sticking their leg out to take a step, to me at least. But historically, if we assume these were pictographs, it looks like the right side stroke may have been an arm. It also looks like most people had hunched backs from working in the fields all day back then. This is still something you frequently see in older people here in Japan, where they're bent nearly in half permanently from so much time spent working in the fields. Our story for person is more of a pictograph. This is a person walking, but viewed from the side. Make it a person you're very familiar with. We're going to go with Ando-san. We'll be using Ando-san because he'll be easy for me to use in future stories and I won't be forgetting him. But when I first learned kanji, I used someone else important to me, which worked well. If you do decide to choose your own person, make sure it's someone you'll easily remember and who you can make lots of stories about. Also, remember that it's a good idea to pause the video after each story and really try to imagine it, or to create a story of your own that will help you remember the kanji even better. Make sure the story contains the meaning and every single part in some way. Which brings us to fire. The official radical for which is not, as you might expect, person, but instead itself. Fire, the only explanation for which I will attempt to show in the historical evolution section. Anyway, since fire itself is a radical, we'll be seeing it from time to time in other kanji as well. With that said, we can break this kanji down into person and two dots, each of which are written at different angles. Often dots are actually considered the no radical, but in this one, considering they're both different angles, we're just going to go with dot. Dots of all types are frequently written first, and fire is no exception. While many fonts make these dots appear to have the same angle and location when used in fire, in reality the first stroke is a bit lower than the second stroke, and it goes northwest to southeast, followed by the second stroke, which is more like a no radical. We then finish with person. The historical evolution of fire is interesting for a few reasons. In the beginning, it clearly started out as a simple pictograph of fire, or a crown. Crown of fire? But then it starts to look like a fire lit underneath a person. That can't be good. Anyway, it slowly morphed into the current form of flames licking at a person from both sides. Which brings us to the story. It's Ando-san on fire. The flames licking out from him. The licking out from him gives a hint at the odd angles of the dots in the kanji. Which brings us to another one of the four elements. Dirt. This looks an awful lot like a cross, but if we think of it planted in the dirt... Getting ahead of myself, sorry. The official radical for dirt is... Dirt. Yep, this is another common radical in other kanji. Broken down further though, we can easily see the ten and one that it's made from. There are three strokes in dirt. We first draw the 10, west to east and north to south, 
followed by the one that it stands on. Historically, this was apparently supposed to look like dirt piled up on the ground. I don't see it. Do you? Let me know in the comments. Our story for dirt is, this is a gravestone marked with a plus 10 staff for our fluorescent worm friend, buried six feet underground in the dirt. Light gone out. Moving away from kanji for a moment, we have three new parts to learn about. This first one looks a lot like a staff radical, except for the swish to the left at the bottom. This part takes the meaning of feathered broomstick radical. Radicals that aren't kanji don't have official radicals, and feathered broomstick is its only part. There's only one simple stroke here that sweeps out to the left at the end. Historically, it apparently used to be a crochet needle, but even in Japanese, the modern meaning is feathered broomstick, so for our story we have, it's a stick with a bunch of feathers stuck into it for sweeping. Looks kinda like a broomstick. For some reason, whatever you do, you can't knock it over. Be sure to imagine yourself really trying to knock it over with all your might, despite it standing on its feathers. It just won't fall over. Bringing us to Fu. The foo part, as I call it. This is not a radical at all, but instead a common part that we'll see from time to time, thus making it worth learning separately. It has one stroke that we start west to east, and cut back at a sharp angle, making it look like an open mouth, or half a bowl from the side. The story we'll use for this part is, the katakana foo has come out to play. He's constantly laughing. <laughs> And here's our last part before the next fun kanji. We'll call it backwards no. Technically, this is a kanji, though I've never seen it in the wild. Its official radical is no, and its only part is no as well, though it's written backwards and with some extra flair, depending on the font. It's also important to note that there are probably very, very few Japanese people who have any idea that this is a kanji. Apparently, no is also a kanji, but I doubt anyone knows about that either. Well, very few people. This is the only word I was able to find that they're in, by the way. Hitsupotsu. This appears to be a very rare and old word that means rocking back and forth, usually for boats. And there are an extremely small number of native Japanese people who could even read or write it. In other words, you do not need to learn this, but it's a fun piece of trivia. It has only one stroke, and we write it west to east, usually exactly like a backwards no. But depending on font, it sometimes is written with a sharp turn down and sweeping off to the right. Our story for this character is, this is just the katakana no, trying to be cool with a backwards hat on. If you want to be this cool, you can be. Just hit the subscribe button below this video, and the bell doubles your coolness. Which finally takes us to the kanji that uses these last three parts. Water. Water's official radical is... Water. But we can break it down into feathered broom, fu, a normal no radical, and backwards no. Despite how complicated this character might look, there are only four strokes. I would personally expect to start with the fu, but instead we start north to south with the feathered broomstick. Then draw fu in one stroke, Next, the normal no radical, and finally our cool backwards no. Historically, this looked a lot more like a flowing river or stream. Perhaps it was morphed because the kanji that actually means river or stream looks very similar. Almost identical, actually. But we'll get to that in another video. Our story for this kanji is, an impossible to knock down feathered broomstick is planted in the middle of floodwater with our friend Fu hanging on to one side, a normal no hanging on to the feathered broomstick by its toes, and our cool no hanging on for dear life, backwards hat facing upwards because he's holding on and being blown in the wind. I really like this next kanji for some reason. Ten years ago, when I was an English conversation teacher, a 67-year-old student of mine told me, I think Japanese is very easy. When I asked her why, she pointed at this kanji, which means tree. She said, Japanese is easy because the word for tree looks like a tree. 
She's not wrong, but I still think she might have been joking, considering the last character we just learned looks nothing like water. The official radical for Tree is Tree. We'll be seeing this one lots, even in this N5 and Konken level 10 series. But we could further break down Tree into one, staff, and both of the no characters we learned so far, if we were so inclined. I will not be doing this for our story though. Tree has four strokes that follow the order of the parts I just mentioned. We start west to east, then draw the staff part north to south. You may remember that vertical lines that cut through other parts are usually drawn last. So why is this one not drawn last? Well, that's because it does not cut through the next two parts. These parts are rather attached to the base of the tree, starting with the one on the left and then on the right. Historically, this one looks a lot like some ancient druidic runes or something, which I think is very appropriate considering the meaning of the kanji. I really like all versions of this character, past and present. The story we'll use is more of a pictograph, a picture of a forest on a hill, but all the trees are the tree kanji. If you like this picture, please don't forget to hit the like button. We'll be using this tree character whenever it shows up in another kanji as a radical. So if you did like it, you'll get to see it a lot. Which takes us to the lesson five quiz. In this section of the video, I'll show you a flashcard with the English meaning for a kanji. Pause the video when we show each card and try to remember how to write that kanji. Next, write it on your hand with your finger or on a piece of paper. Then press play and see if you were right. The best way to remember kanji you just learned is to search your memory for the story we taught you or the one you made based on the English word on the flashcard. Our first card is person. Next is fire. Just a few more. Here's Dirt. Then there's water. Finally, we have tree. Let us know how many you got right down in the comments. You can learn the next five kanji by clicking here if the video is already out. If you don't want to wait, you can continue learning with our level 1 kanji flashcard deck for Anki on tokeniandy.com. We're also releasing kanji series videos early for all the members there, so check it out if you want a head start.